the Born Harbor cycle. So this is just a like fancy version of a Hess law cycle. Like it's nothing more than that. Um, so if you're struggling with this, just check that you can do like other Hess examples because it might be that that's holding you back um, versus like this specific example. So the idea of the Born Harbor cycle is that we can work out the lattice enthalpy for an ionic compound. So in IB Chem, we define lattice enthalpy as the energy required to break apart um, an ionic lattice in solid state to its gaseous ions. So it's basically going from this bottom part here to the top. So arrow pointing in that direction. So the IB defines it in an endothermic way. If you look in the data booklet, all of the values for lattice enthalpy are positive values. They're endothermic. Um, if you look at other syllabuses, sometimes it's defined the other way around. So don't get confused if you find random questions on the internet that define lattice enthalpy differently. Um, but we're defining it this way, going from the ionic lattice and breaking it apart into its gaseous ions. Now, this is not something that we can really do in a lab to get like an experimental value for lattice enthalpy. So what we do is we use a Hess cycle and some other things that we can do in the lab to predict what that lattice enthalpy would be. So let's label this up first. So this is delta H lattice. Okay, so I find the easiest way to remember kind of how a Born Harbor cycle looks um, is something called the fail technique, um, which is like all over the internet, there's lots of different ones from different places. And we can label it like this and you'll see what it means in a second, but the L is over here and it stands for that lattice enthalpy um, that we've just put into our diagram. So all good to start with. The F stands for delta H formation. So formation is when you take the element in their standard states under standard conditions um, and then you form the compound, form one mole of the compound that you're trying to form. So in this case, I'm trying to form uh, sodium chloride. So sodium in its standard state under standard conditions just exists as sodium solid. Uh, the chlorine exists as Cl2 in its standard states under standard conditions, and that is a gaseous state. So the delta HF is going from those elemental forms to the sodium chloride. So you can see how I'm like trying to build up the connections between all of these things. Um, and the F standard for formation. Okay, so the next one is delta H atomization atomization. Now atomization is the energy to go from the like element in its standard states to the gaseous atoms. So for the sodium, we'd be going from sodium solid to sodium gas. Now sometimes this is called sublimation, that's okay too, but it would ruin my fail thing and the IB tends to call it atomization. So <laughs> we're gonna go from the solid to the gaseous form. This one wouldn't normally exist in the data booklet, so you would normally be given this value, or this might be the value that you're trying to find in your um, enthalpy change uh, using your Born Harbor cycle. The chlorine, you're gonna convert that, oh, sorry, I didn't balance this. So this should be half a Cl2 to go down to the NaCl at the bottom. Um, but as an atomic form of chlorine, we don't want like half a mole of Cl2 molecules, like we don't want them to be bonded together at all. So we're gonna separate those just into Cl gas. So instead of having half a mole of Cl2 molecules, we're gonna have one mole of Cl atoms. So we break those up and that becomes, at, like we're doing the atomization of chlorine too. This value for the atomization of atomization of chlorine, you can actually find in the data book under the bond enthalpy. So if I show you in the data booklet under table, she says, <laughs> table 11, you've got bond enthalpy values. So this value here for chlorine, this 242, actually relates to the value where you take 
chlorine, the bond enthalpy, and you split it up into two Cl. So we're going chlorine gas to two Cl atoms. So what we're doing in this example is we're doing this process, but kind of halved, because if we look back at my example, we're going from half a Cl2 to just like Cl. So this would be half, let me do that in a different color so you can see it better. So this would be half the bond enthalpy value. Okay, so often you can pull out that value of the non-metal from the bond enthalpy. So just be aware that that exists and the IB will expect that you can know how to do that. Cool. So the last thing that we need to pull our cycle together is the last step to join these um, gaseous atoms to the gaseous ions. So we call this ionization, which is what the I stands for. So to go from Na to Na plus is an ionization, the energy required to remove one mole of electrons from one mole of gaseous atoms. So this is the first ionization energy of uh, sodium. Now in general terms and like before you got to IB you probably called it ionization whether you were like adding an electron or taking an electron away. Now in IB we say that if we're a bit more specific with our definitions if we're adding a mole of electrons to a mole of gaseous atoms then we actually call this one atomize oh sorry not atomization going crazy today. We call this electron affinity. So electron affinity is where that chlorine is going to gain a mole of electrons. So although I'm like putting it in under my ionization like bracket, it's really an electron affinity. These values, you saw them a little bit before, they also exist in the data booklet. So you can find these they're here in table eight. If you're new syllabus, um, I think they're in table nine now, but the like table looks almost identical to this one. Um, so you can see that you've got the first ionization energy on the left hand side and then the electron affinity on the right hand side of the box. Okay, so lots of these values you can find in the data booklet. Um, and what you're looking at is really like to summarize this, you're working out, you can work at any of these from any, like all of the others. As long as you've got everything else, you can work out one of these values. So it depends on what the question is, depends on like how it's worded as to what you're gonna do. But if we look at the arrows and which direction they're heading in, you can see hopefully that if we're doing like clockwise versus anti-clockwise, these two arrows here are both going um, anti-clockwise, whereas the other, can I do this in a different color? Whereas the other values, all of these four are all going uh, in a clockwise direction. So what we're going to say is in this case, or in every case rather, your delta H lattice plus your delta H formation is going to equal the delta H atomizations, like times two of them for like the non-metal and the metal plus your delta H ionization plus the delta H electron affinity. And that's like the summary of how you're gonna get that calculation done, depending on the values that you're given um, and how you're gonna put it in, you can rearrange that whole thing. Um, but that is the summary of how the Born Harbor cycle works.